In this demonstration, I'm going to show how we can use the Red Hat CloudForms Management Engine, along with OpenStack Heat Orchestration Engine, to create self-service for developers who want to launch a Spring application in a three-tier environment. The first thing that I need is an, is an OpenStack Heat template. We're going to be using this Heat template here. Uh, it has a set of parameters. These parameters include information for uh, registering systems to a satellite, a public network to attach to, a set of name servers, and then some typical OpenStack instance parameters for the SSH key and a glance image. It also includes some parameters for where to get the application. So this will allow me to pull uh, a WAR file from a Jenkins build and deploy it. The resources defined in this template include a network, a subnet, a router, and then a set of virtual machines. So there is a web server, there is a application server, and then there is a database server. Each one of these are configured into their roles using cloud in it. So you can see an example of the shell script that we're running here to register a system to satellite and then to install JBoss and deploy the application. Once I have the heat template, then I'm going to create a custom catalog item inside of the Red Hat CloudForms management engine for users to use. Let's take a look at that process. To create a new catalog item, go to the Services tab and go to Catalogs. Inside of here there are a set of accordions uh, for the service catalogs that we've currently created, uh, for catalog items that belong in those catalogs, orchestration templates that can be either Heat uh, or it can also be uh, Azure orchestration templates as well as Ansible playbooks, um, and then the catalogs themselves. We're going to be looking at a Heat template here. This Spring application template is the one we were just looking at on GitHub. Um, it's basically a copy-paste uh, of the heat template into the management engine. Uh, there's a little bit of metadata, but as you can see, in general, uh, it's just the heat template. Now, in order to create a catalog item, I'm going to take this heat template, I'm going to combine a custom dialog with it, and then I'm going to associate it with a provider. I have two OpenStack providers in this environment, one in Phoenix and one in Raleigh, and so there'll be separate catalog items for each of those two environments. That allows users the flexibility to decide whether they want to deploy in Raleigh or in Phoenix. Alternatively, I could bundle a few items together and do some intelligent placement in a hybrid cloud formation as well. Once I have the template uploaded, to create the dialog, I just select Create Service Dialog from the orchestration template here. Let's go ahead and create one so you can see what the process looks like. Service dialogs are edited and managed in a different environment. We go to Automate, Customization. And here we select Service Dialogs from the accordion on the left. You'll see the one that we just created here, and you'll also see what CloudForms has done basically is take the parameters inside of the heat form template and then create uh, GUI items for each of them for a user to be able to select. Now, most of my users, I'm imagining, are not going to want to have to enter in eight different parameters every time they go to launch a stack. So what I've done here is I've taken uh, that, uh, that uh, dialog box and I've edited it and I've gone through <laughs> and set some basic parameters for each one of these. Uh, so for example, I've changed the name of the satellite server, the organization, as well as the activation key. And then I've made some of them read-only, I've made some of them invisible, to kind of limit the options uh, that a user has when they go to select the service out of the catalog. Let's go back to the service catalog to see how these come together into a catalog item. As I mentioned before, I have two different zones to deploy this in, and so I've created two different catalog items. The first one in Phoenix, you can see um, I've taken the orchestration template and I've attached it with the dialog that we were just looking at here. Um, and then the same thing in Raleigh as well. 
The main thing that's different is the provider for these two catalog items has been specified. I've also uploaded a custom image. Uh, this is kind of a nice touch that gives a user uh, the ability to visually grasp what kind of service they're deploying. Speaking of, let's go ahead and order a service catalog item as a user and see what that looks like. Here I'm going to log in as myself. And I'm going to be presented with a dashboard. And that dashboard has a list of services that I'm currently running, uh, requests that I've put in that were either approved or denied. Uh, and then it will also give me chargeback. Uh, in this situation, we haven't had enough time for a chargeback to report run yet. A note on approval, so CloudForms provides a highly customizable approval process for these requests. In that scenario, you can imagine where you might want to have a manager approval if I'm getting my third service or if I'm requesting a service that has a high number of resources, particularly in a public cloud provider. Uh, there are a lot of different ways to create these approval chains uh, and to either auto-approve or request manual intervention for requests. Inside the service catalog, I see here the uh, service catalog item that we were just looking at in the administrative view. Uh, it's this one right here. And you'll also see when I go to order it, uh, the pre-populated fields from the service dialog are already all in here. So I don't have to lug around the public network ID uh, or which guest image I'd want to use. Some of these fields are going to be populated from the management engine. For example, a list of available tenants. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, give myself a name for the stack here. Uh, and then I'm going to pick a glance image. Uh, this was an automatically generated list. CloudForms asked the provider which images were available. I'm going to add this item to my shopping cart. And then I'm going to go ahead and check out. This will put a request in the queue, which we can look at here. This request right now is pending approval, uh, but I expect it to be auto-approved uh, based upon the rules that I've already put in place. While that's provisioning, let's take a look uh, at how this looks from the administrative viewpoint. If I come back to services and I select my services, you'll see a list here of all the services that the different users have provisioned uh, out of the catalog. Um, you can see a number of spring applications have been provisioned, uh, four. This is the request. Uh, let me see if we can find the one that we just put in. Here's the request that we just put in. You can see uh, the owner, Michael Solberg. You can see the group is sales. And you can see that there aren't any virtual machines for this application yet. Another one that was provisioned earlier by a different user has been fully provisioned. And you'll see we have a list of three virtual machines associated with the service. And we also have some uh, statistics around uh, utilization and consumption associated with the service. There's a robust chargeback mechanism as well as a robust quota mechanism inside of CloudForms that we can use to guide users' actions uh, as far as you know, provisioning and uh, using resources, both internal clouds and also public clouds. You'll also see that the orchestration stack is associated with the service. So this one here, when I click on the orchestration stack, I'm going to get a list of all the relationships that we would expect to find. So remember, the orchestration stack consists of three instances. It consists of uh, 12 parameters that we looked at. I've also put in there uh, an output uh, for the IP address of the service once provisioned. Uh, and you can get a full list of the resources here. This is right in line. You can also see the state for these, right? So if I did not choose to roll back on failure, I might see that you know, this port was unable to be provisioned, for example, or this router, if I wanted to dig in. But the admin view is, is most useful as a higher level. Uh, when I look at these two cloud providers that I mentioned earlier, um, I get a dashboard view into them. I can get a feel for capacity utilization, um, as well as I can get a view for, um, you know, how, how users are using the system. I also have a dashboard. Uh, that allows me to generate reports based on this usage and do some forecasting. So you can see here at a high level view this OpenStack provider. Um, I have two availability zones, five tenants, five flavors, uh, 
a set of security groups and a number of instances running. Um, I can also view instances outside of whether they're in a zone or not, uh, or in a region or not. Uh, and this gives me you know, the ability to get a global view into what's running in the infrastructure, uh, whereas if I'm only using Horizon, I get a very localized view. Right? So here you can see a number of instances. It gives me information on IP addressing, flavors, uh, size, and then also the provider. So you can see some of these have been provisioned in Phoenix, and some of these have been provisioned in Raleigh. Let's go into the actual OpenStack Horizon interface. We'll get a view for how it looks uh, from here. Here you can see uh, within the sales project, the sales tenant, uh, I can get a list of stacks. And we should have my stack provisioned here, Spring 5. It was just created two minutes ago. And from here on out, it operates just like we would expect, right? The beauty of cloud forums is that, whereas in here I'm constrained in my view to this particular tenant on this particular provider, uh, cloud forums gives me a global view across all tenants and all providers. It allows me to do dashboarding and recording. So at this point, I should see that my service has been provisioned. Here it is. And I can get a list uh, of the virtual machines that are associated with this service. And I can also get a list of the resources that I'm currently consuming uh, as a user of the platform. I also have the ability to retire the service. I can either retire it now or schedule it. One of the kind of greatest features of Cloud Forms is that when I create these services, I can set retirement dates for them so that I don't have to remember to turn off resources uh, that I'm wanting to run. So I can tell myself, hey, warn me in a week. We're going to be retiring this in a month. So this concludes my demonstration of using heat templates and the CloudForms management engine to create self-service. Thank you for watching.